Where y'all want to start it, man? Some relationship stuff, some BS, some some not relationship stuff. What y'all want to talk about? BS. Okay. We can start BS first. We can we can go there. We first. always gonna okay, be BS. Okay, right? okay. Hmm. <laughs> oh, I love BS. <laughs> hmm. She ready for the BS. We're going to start with this. i seen this clip on uh, the gram. I added it to the list. It's a young lady saying that basically um, women say they want a man to, you know, to be with just them monogamous. But, you know, mm. all right. yeah, I'm sure you have. Always, but women be the main ones pushing for monogamy. And then when a bitch get in a relationship, you she don't understand by asking this man to not fuck nobody else. Damn. By asking this man to not call nobody else. By asking this man to not look at another woman for none of his wants and needs as far as male to female. You are then saying, I'm going to be whatever you need me to be, nigga. Because mm -hmm, I don't mm -hmm. want, but y'all don't understand that. Mm. Y'all just think that's how it's supposed to be because that's what the, the media and the movies and your man and them taught you. That, like, that's what y'all think. Y'all, y'all, like, truth be told, if you really, if up front, a bitch told you, she said it, not me. These are all the things you're going to have to do, girl, in order to lock this nigga in like you want to. <clears throat> Half of y'all wouldn't even want the nigga after that. But you never sit down to actually really consider what does it take to be fucking Ray Ray's girlfriend? What does it take to be she Michael's wife? Like, what, what Ray type Ray of Ray demons she, do this nigga really got? What she type of sex drive do he really got if he left every other bitch alone and only fucked with me? Preach. What type of things would he want out of me? Preach. Mm. 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 Who want to follow that up? Y'all be one a nigga that's, a, that's a rich and a freak and got a okay, great personality, but it's low key. Don't talk to nobody, but it's a people person. But it's like, y'all want all this shit. And girl, if you actually had to entertain that nigga nonstop by yourself, bitch, you'd be a circus monkey. The way you would have to suck dick on Tuesday, <laughs> swing from the off. ceiling fan on Thursday, be them always. But women be the. First of all. <laughs> Preach. React. That was gospel. What do y'all think? <laughs> I think I think she was one hundred percent right. I think we, that's the issue we have with like traditional relationship constructs now. Is I think people go in looking for an outcome or starting with the end in mind, or without really understanding like all the variables the that work go into that. Go into that. One hundred percent. So like I do understand it goes both ways, but I do think that if people really understood what you're asking, like the main concept that I I really agree with is when you're asking for someone to be monogamous or you're entering into a relationship, you are asking to say, hey, I want to be the person that's going to help stimulate all your needs and desires or at least work towards them, right, through communication and through growth. But I, I think that some people don't really, like, comprehend that. I think they look at faithfulness as almost just a construct or, like, a rule to be in a relationship. Bars? Mm, I agree uh, with that, Willie. Go ahead, bro. No, go ahead. I, I just think people go into relationships with the wrong intention, bro. I think we lean to the far extreme of what we can get out of that relationship rather than what we can give to the relationship and how we can contribute to the relationship. Right. And then on top of that second part of what she was talking about, I think uh, a lot of the times men, women, they don't think about what is attractive about an ambitious man is his drive, his aggression, his 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 will to go get it. And yeah. Now, when you cut that off and you and you cage it to to a degree, you gotta feed that beast. Now, you know what I'm saying. That's the very thing that attracted you, but now you have to keep it up. You bought the big ass Rottweiler, now you gotta buy the big ass seventy pound like bag of food and the cage, and you know what I'm saying. That vet so, bill and pick up that kind of dog. So crap. I think they kind of like look at it like, oh, this he can go get it. He can go get it. He's ambitious. <laughs> He's gonna want to come get it from you too. So you gotta be ready to to supply that. I'm going to play devil's advocate for like half a second. Please do. All right, so on this pod, we subscribe to the fact that men control access to relationship, correct? For mm -hmm. sure. All right, so if we control access to relationship, <clears throat> why don't we see that in the, in, in the woman first? If we don't see those qualities in a woman that she can take care of everything, she's fucking me the way I want, she's fucking me how, how, how much I want, she's taking care of everything, she covers all bases of everything I'm wanting. If we don't see that, why are we giving access to a relationship at that point? All right, mm -hmm. I got you. One, I don't think that's devil devil's advocate at all. Oh, I think that's I what should go anyway. That should be the thought process of us okay. anyway. And then for two, though, to answer you that question. discipline dudes kill me now. <laughs> no, no, for, no, two, I'm, no, I'm for two, though, I think I think a lot of women turn that freak on in the beginning because I think we've all probably been through that. I agree. They mm -hmm. were sucking and fucking and doing all that stuff. Y'all just got them. Look, no, you said I'm and sticking two to, twice. I'm sticking to two words. I'm focusing on them two no, words. I thought we said bitching. Oh, <sighs> shit. <Yeah. laughs> 
Fuck. Guys, I just made a new rule. We're going to start trying to curse less. It's a it's a process. Right, it's a process. We're learning. <laughs> We're all educated. We can do it. It's not yeah. hard. It's not difficult. On, I was focusing on them two words, though. Just but that's, that's why I said the first 10 minutes, let's not try to Okay. No, no, yeah. you're right. You're right. You're right. Gotcha. Okay. And yeah. I think now, when we first encounter these women, they're, they're, we're having sex to a high, uh, on a high clip. Yeah. And we're like, oh, man, this is about to be, well, this is about to be forever. And no, it doesn't really end up like that. But there's a lot of elements to play into that. Yeah, See, that's that, go ahead. No, that's why I always say that competition anxiety is healthy, right? Your girl knowing like, no, nah, it's girls out here that they on they, they square. It's women out here that you're attractive to, too. She wants to keep you. She's going to compete. She's going to make sure she turn that right. on for you. She should. I feel the same way about me. I know it's other dudes out here getting to the bag, getting to the gym, getting to all these things. I need to be on my square. Right. The best way to stay ahead of competition is to know you're always in competition. Yes, facts. Oh, in any bars, one hundred percent. But but I think to Elle's point, I think that's what's really weird. Like when you're out here dating, it's amazing how many women expect for you to like hop into a relationship with them rather quickly. Mm -hmm. And when you're the nigga that doesn't do that, you're usually the outlier. To like Chris's point, nigga is like especially weak. Beta I would have twenty dollars in this jar. Yo, no, but wait, weak, men, weak men. dudes, weak dudes. There we go. Usually go <laughs> out and get into relationships really quickly especially because i think guys use relationships as a way to try to get a woman to like go in the house mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. so what happens is to l's point like if you were really intentional about like saying hey i'm going to date this person to see if they can meet all these needs before i give them that relationship title mm -hmm. then you probably would reduce some of those like anxieties around can you do this for me before i go monogamy what happens is i see a lot of dudes lead with monogamy as a way to try to like infiltrate a woman's head Mm -hmm. I agree. But I don't think we... I've never been that type of dude. No, but it happens a lot. Because I'm, I'm, sure, I'm telling yeah. you, especially the weaker the guy... Guys like to try to go in and control through relationship. Right. So they like to go in and immediately say, yo, you're my girl. We're together. You go in the house and then they'll still go off and cheat and do things that are not you know, of high integrity. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, hey, I'm going to show up. I'm going to date you. I'm going to understand that you're going to probably date other men. I'm probably going to date other women. And then once I decide that this is somebody I want to go further with, I'm going to lead in that discussion and try to take this woman into a certain spot where I know I can commit to and really uphold the standard of a relationship. Most guys don't do that. Most guys operate out of fear and scarcity. Mm -hmm. and that's that's, that's the opposite compete. of spinning plates. That's, that's, that's <laughs> right. why they want to compete, that, like uh, Kadeem said. Like, they know it's a competition out there. So in order to uh, right. go, go around that competition, let me go ahead and lock you in now. Mm -hmm. So there is, no, there is no more competition. There is no more dating. But they, like you said, they'll, they'll go outside the relationship but, in the same sense. You but know if, what's crazy, too? Ahead. I think it kind of proves Elliot's point about the relationship credit score off of what I said in general like we, we act differently like some people act differently while they're trying to get the relationship a lot of people yeah, treat the, the relationship like it's the goal right. rather than that's the start but, you know but, what I'm saying but real if you're a dude and you're in my opinion if the more you have an abundance mindset and like like Kadeem said like you're really spinning plates out here I feel like you already understand that women are gonna naturally tap into the guy that they like the most regardless yep. Okay. Yep. Willie how, how can a man get that abundance mindset because I feel like that's I agree <sighs> But how how can we get these boys to flip that switch? To really focus more on their purpose and investing into themselves because you'll naturally attract certain women just by being. But is that going to help you create an abundance? It will purpose. because you'll start seeing how you start to attract women and how women experience. Oh, you know, you. yeah, you, it, it, I feel you because yeah. if you do have, if you if you're on your square and yeah. you start feeling that energy. You start realizing, like, I'm not just getting the energy from one. I'm getting, I'm getting from a, here, yeah, here, yeah, here, here, here. Yeah, it'll help you. It's not wrong at all. You'll know, yeah, yeah. know the value you create because I've been on both sides. And what I'm saying is, like, at the end of the day, once you have that mindset, you'll know that, hey, when I do give somebody a relationship title or if I do give somebody that energy, it's valued out here because other women want the same thing. Facts. So you're not going to just go around giving it willy-nilly. And, and I like that he just said that he's been on both sides because most people act, you know, especially up here on this YouTube crap. Yeah. <laughs> no. They get on here act no, like they've been getting, side, they only been getting Jones for the life. Bag yeah. since, <laughs> since 05. I've been getting all girls since, no, come on, You know bro. what's crazy, though? I think it's, I think it's obviously bigger than women, too. Because when a boy goes out here and he's actually putting his hands in something and he's actually creating and attracting and accomplishing his goals, he can see, like, oh, man, I actually have power to create and to actually make things happen. Yeah. So and when he's in a relationship, he probably is going to connect to that, too. Like, I know I can go out here and attract these certain women if yeah. me and you don't work. Right, you know what absolutely. I'm saying? I always say, like, you know, when I'm when I'm talking to, well, now I mean, y'all know where I'm at now, but I, that's a prerequisite. Being fine is not something special to me. Yeah. That's part of the, the criteria. Exactly. Right? That's part of that mindset. Like, right, yo, there's a million. What what Joe Budden say? For every bad joint? There's it's nothing they get tired of messing tired with. Come on, man. <laughs> that sounds crazy when you right. For every bad bitch, it's a nigga tired of fucking her. You can't, you can't yeah. water that one down. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the truth. Once you know that, 
But, but, can I, but can I tell you, though, like, I will also say, like, for women, like, if I look on the other side, women get more understanding of the competitive nature of as they top older. guys as they get older. Yes. So, like, I will say, as I've gotten older, how women show up as they've gotten older, they come in a lot more understanding that competitive mindset. Whereas before, when I was younger, they would come in on more of a, like, I'm a woman. You should be wanting this. I'm giving yeah. you a vagina, like kind of like. But this. when they were 21, so 20 to 4, yeah, yeah. 25. Well, no, even then they they still getting attention from the 35 year old Willie. Right. Yeah. But you know you, what I'm saying? <laughs> it's the opposite of that princess complex. I think the competition drives us too because we're like, oh, we got to get like every every man when we were younger is trying to get some women. Right. So yeah. we were like, For yo, sure. oh, I got one. Mm -hmm. I got to make sure like yeah. I can keep her attention and keep doing this and keep doing that. So we're gonna do whatever we got to do to do it, and then we compromise. Our morals, our integrity, a whole Absolutely. bunch of stuff. Sometimes I just feel keep like that, I don't feel that way. I but when I was younger, I, I mean, obviously we all did the like yeah. we had a girlfriend. But mm -hmm. once I was past that, I was yo. You would be waiting for me for years. <laughs> you would just be waiting. I never really did no, girlfriends I know, when I was younger. I, I think what Chris is saying is like, I mean. I'm sure none of you guys have, but a lot of men <laughs> in their 20s and 30s have cheated on relationships. No, we've you know, cheated. Right. Come on, so, man. We so, keep it a so, foul so, well so, so what I'm saying is what he's saying is you compromise your integrity because you have this, I got to go get mine. Yeah. You put them in the house. You're with her for six months. And the next thing you know, the first girl that give you attention yeah. at the gym, you sliding over there with her. And then you sliding mm -hmm. over here with her. Mm -hmm. And then you're keeping this other girl at the crib. Yeah. So what he's saying is that, but if you really had that abundance mindset, you would have never been in that relationship to begin with unless you truly believe that this is somebody that you wanted to be with long term and eventually yeah. marry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that. so with that being said, how long is too long to get in a relationship then? Because I feel like how long with, is my long? Latest, with my latest relationship, it was over a year. I did a year. So You know what I'm saying? And But me now, I'm looking at it because I think older, as we get older, our criteria kind of changes and yeah. it kind of gets to, it's heavier, but it's not as many items. And we know, we talked about it before, but it's, we know when somebody's right and when they're not, because I feel like, and then it goes to what you're saying, we cultivated that environment. So when they step into it, it's easy to, to evaluate just yeah, by this placement alone. Yeah. You, but, know but you know what I'm saying? But it's funny, because this is like the, the inverse of like the dating dynamic as you get older. I feel like women are squeezed down the time because they realize that time is not on their side, so they try to force it earlier. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I've gotten older, I've extended the time because I know how serious that type of commitment and is, more and options. I do want to have integrity in any space that I hold. So like, I'm actually mm -hmm. more conservative, and women are more aggressive. That's that's mm -hmm. deep because I feel like as we get older, when we were younger, the world wasn't as vast, mm -hmm. yeah, it wasn't yeah. as big. Our understanding wasn't what it is. Right. And I think as we get older, I think that's why that is because we understand better. The world is bigger. The abundance, like you said, is literally abundance because we're like looking out into the world, like, dang, it's all this stuff out here. But when we were younger, right, it was, it was just high school, whatever yep. street you lived on, mm -hmm. the mall. Mm -hmm. The we was hype if we, I live in Chesapeake home. and I know a drone on the beach. I was right. hype. Right. <laughs> but women start to understand, especially for the guys that they really like and that will actually do something. Because women will find guys that they like and they'll the guys will slide on them and then they'll move on. But they'll start to realize the type of guys that they like that will actually potentially marry them actually slim down. Mm -hmm. So when they do have that person that's in front of them, they do get more aggressive after that because they realize it is scarce, especially in the black community. To find guys that hit certain criteria is rare that are single. Yeah. Because eventually a lot of those guys, even you know, like the guy out of Harvard, whatever the case would be, those investment bankers, there was already a jank already snapped, there that already snatched them up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then when, when you do find that guy, imagine a guy who's like already on his grind, has all those things, has all this money that's really on his stuff. At 35, he's single. You know how hard it is to break that guy down and get that guy roped yeah, in? Nah. He's been selfish his whole life. Yes. And then it's just as simple as there are more women on the planet than, than us. men. Yes. <laughs> Here it. Let it Let's run. get some. Hold on. Lydia, you're a woman. <laughs> Do you want to <laughs> chime in you, on some days? Wow. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, we're having a real what is thorough. The question? Is there a direct question or am I just? No, what are your thoughts on, on this discussion so far? So I think that we kind of veered off the topic and then Definitely. came back around. But basically, if we go back to the original topic about people being aware, not people, women, women being aware that you need to fulfill the needs of your person. Like, how many times I said on this podcast, you have to listen and learn how to be with the nigga you want to be with. Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. why, what kind of sense does it make? Any, just think about it. Like, you have to be something he wants if you want him to keep you. What the fuck? You gotta you know be, what I'm you saying? Got, you gotta be consistent, yo. 
that I you. think I think the clip yeah. was more so you, like trying to be his everything. Like if you fully want well, a man to be well, that's what I'm saying. You well have to vested in and monogamous. learn to see what his everything. What does that mean? But you know, you know, Lydia, his I, everything man, would be what. Even... And then if you're a woman, you're in that competitive mind state. You're gonna make yourself into that if you really want to be with that person. But can you really be a guy's everything? I would. You can't really be any person's the... everything. Well, that's, of course really, not. But, but I swear, you, know, <laughs> you gotta I'm give the effort. I gotta give us. I gotta give us some leeway. I don't think men are looking for women to be there and everything. I'm gonna take it back to that no, word. Men will accept I think a good men, like 85%. 85% is amazing. Right, y'all be right. is great. So no, if you can shoot for 85% of what he needs, it, chances are he'll like But you keep know. that 85% Consistent. up across the yeah. board. Right. Across can't let it, we board. want the same yeah. thing, y'all. Not just for you can't the let first it drop month. to like 48 yes. sometimes. Right. And no, what he's saying is you can't, like, if one of my criteria is I like you to be fit and you can't fall off. That's what I'm saying. You can't fall off. You can't let it drop to 48. You can't do that. It's gotta be across the board. The same way you want me to keep my job and keep money flowing in. Right, way I want right. to certain things but, a certain way. But you know yeah. what? It, it's what you said, and we, we can, we can get ready to right. next, <laughs> the next clip. But there's one thing I did in therapy. Black men therapy is Ooh. great. Every black man, you should be going to therapy. A hundred. So, um, hey, man, tell me about the holiday, bro. I called me and called back. Oh, uh, no, I'm definitely going to hit him up. Please. Yep. But look, like, but it goes back to what Chris <laughs> said. I think that if you were to re at the stage that you're willing to give access to relationships to what Lydia said, if you were to write down your top five values, and you say, hey, these are the things I value in a partner. She shares what she values in a partner. And if you really see that there's at least alignment or there's someone that says, hey, I can uphold those values, you, I think you can maintain that 85% because the yeah. team said, and, and, and it, you can't be nervous to say it. If you're saying that, hey, one of my values is for you to be, you know, at the, your best physically, spiritually, mentally, then you know a year down the road if you veer away from that and I come to you and say, hey, I told you this is one of my values and yeah. you, you know, directly went against that. You accepted that. the terms right. of the agreement. Yeah, but that's really what it is. A relationship is, is still an organization. It's still yeah. a, 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 a covenant that you guys are sharing, even as boyfriend and girlfriends. And so what I'm saying is I do think that we don't ask that question. Like I had never been in a relationship in my life where I sat there and said, hey, before we go together, can you write down what you value? Because I know if we would have done that, I would have avoided some relationships. Yeah. And you almost got to do it blindly. Mm -hmm. You almost, yeah. I'm not going to tell you what my values are. Right. I'm just going to ask you, and we write them down, and then we we swap, and we, we swap. see if they align. Right. Because I think a lot of times we, like, tell, I, I, will, I want this woman so bad, right? She tells me that she likes a man that works out, a man that plays basketball, a man that works here. I'm going to go make sure I can fit that, but it's not, in me, it's on me at that point. Mm -hmm. So I can't really mm -hmm. maintain it mm -hmm. to a degree. I can get a like year in. I can get a year like in and be like, oh man, this shit is heavy. I agree. I, I don't really like basketball like that. <laughs> you know and you're not good. You're not right. you gonna get right. picked right. up in the court. You know the last part. Right. You know when it gets it gets the heaviest <laughs> when you're done fucking her. <laughs> <laughs> what? I missed it. It's what? the truth. <laughs> Expense I know it's the that. truth. Expand upon that. No, once Pause. you're tired, like, okay, this shit is cool, but we kind of got to a point uh, where yeah, it's like, you yeah, got what you wanted out of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, now it's like, that, now I'm doing stuff to maintain no, something. Then it's Chris just said that, like, in, in the beginning, you, he said it more nicely, like, hey, I want her, but you're being driven by extreme ex external factors. You're being driven by this idea of wanting to connect with her. Mm -hmm. A year down the road, you done already had her 365, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, something like, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I do think that certain things that didn't annoy you in the beginning when she used to get up in the morning and, you know, sing out and shit like that, like, now a year in, you're like, yo, that shit's fucking annoying. But you, it's, it's, that's when foresight comes into play, and I think mm -hmm. we have to utilize that because I think a lot of times men we subconsciously confuse the want to get in that, get in that, get in that box with one. He, he was trying to find a word. Right. He was like, <laughs> he's like, I was struggling. Ah, but but Chris is right. I think I think even sometimes I think sometimes we don't even realize it after we do it. No, yeah. we're right. like, oh man, I don't. Dang, I, and this is the honest to God truth because I've been there clarity. before. Yeah. We'll be like, yo. It's not I really like her like that. Right. I don't really want to do but this not anymore. Post my clarity. Like when I talk to women, I could literally chart the relationships. I believe, and I haven't, I haven't put this all the data together. Most relationships out here last between six to twelve months, and it's like an inverted U curve. The guy wants to get with you and fuck you half the year, really high, and he'll go through ups and downs. He's with you every day, and he's just blaming, blaming, blaming. And then at that like top of that U curve, he's like, oh shit. I'm kind of like used to fucking now. And then he sees another person that he wants to fuck. And then he stops calling you as much. He stops right. coming over. And starts that other you yeah. come with the other person. Exactly. And then, exactly. Yep. And then you start saying like, oh yep. my God. And then when I asked the girl, like, what happened with you and him? Like, you know, he got annoying. He didn't call me as much. His consistency <laughs> was off. Yeah, of course. The other bitch had entered in. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. And it just, I think it comes to our, like you said, our, our values. I think at a certain point, the cheeks are a little too high, higher yes. than they should be. 100%. Yes. And yeah. when you have certain other items that become heavier as you get older and your world 
world expands, mm -hmm. I think it makes it easy for you to hold on to that woman because you're like, yo, I can't find it. She's loyal. She does this. She does that. Mm -hmm. I would rather just stay here right. rather than going to dip into something that we've dipped in 50 times. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I sure. think as we get older, I think you realize like how often you can get cheeks and like how unimportant. Yeah. Pray, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. like I can get this. So I'm looking for, if I'm out there, I'm looking for something else. Substance. Like, yes. Yeah, something else that can keep me there. Like yeah. what, what else do you have other than just cheeks or sex like yeah. what are you what are you what are you giving towards my no life? more empty calories right like what are you yes. bringing towards my life like, is she really funny exactly. yeah, really you, funny yeah. am I, am yeah. I just that laughing? shit wasn't funny that right. you laughed at the first time <laughs> when you <laughs> now like, now it's like right, you straight face right. yeah. like, right. that shit was weak corny right. <laughs> you're terrible right. at this <laughs> Like step, that stepbrother joint when they was in the interview with the suit. <laughs> not, them, not them suits, just a little fucked up. <laughs> yeah. For real, man. <laughs> no, that's one of my favorite movies. <laughs> that's for real, though. Hilarious. Uh, okay. So, y'all, good. Look at y'all. Came to pod. Y'all making me cry. I'm about to cry. I didn't have to produce the whole episode. We've been rolling. <laughs> Say your cries much, we bro. almost at 250,000 on this shit, man. What he said? Uh, don't whisper out here, man. What he said? What did he, what did he say? That uh, honey kicking in. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. But I'm going to let y'all know. We ain't pushed back from the gate yet, though. Okay. I'm going to let y'all know when we're about to take off. Bet. For sure.